All right, if you would, take your Bibles and go to Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. And we're just going to re, um, rehash a little bit of Esther um, before we get into the message, just to kind of get us where we're at. Um, I'm going to read a verse this morning, then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Ah, there it is. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And God, the truth of the matter is, is that the enemy is not sitting next to us, nor is the enemy um, not here this morning in the fact that maybe it's a family member. Maybe um, we think of a person at work as an, as an enemy against us, or um, anything or any one person is not the enemy. What's the enemy is the principalities and powers of this world. And God, you have, you have written this for us to realize this is that we are in a spiritual battle. And within this spiritual battle, we let things control us um, in our life. And we let things come in our way, and then we start thinking something that Satan puts in our minds. And we think that maybe it's our fault, or we think that it's someone else's fault, and then we place blame on that, or... Um, or then we fall away from you because we put blame on you for allowing things to take place. God, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of this darkness of this world. Lord, help us to conquer the darkness this morning. Lord, with that said, I pray that you would cast out any evil spirit inside this, this uh, building. And when I say this, I'm, I'm saying this in that the evil spirit, the demons could be in here just because it's a church doesn't mean that they can't come in. But we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this church building this morning. I pray, God, that you would take the four corners of this church and place guardian angels there and keep out any demonic spirit from keeping us from listening to you this morning. Lord, we pray that you would work a work in our heart. I pray, God, that as we look to you and we seek your word and we seek your wisdom, that you would use my mouth and that you would use it well. I pray, God, that you would speak through my heart of the things that have been placed there, not in my mind, but in my heart. I pray, God, that you would take the word and may it become powerful for us this morning. And in thine we pray. Amen. So, here we go. Esther, chapter 3. Kind of feel like you're at the races. You know, like they're starting, like, man, okay, here we go. Let's zip. All right, let's go. Esther, chapter 3. And we're just going to kind of rehash where we are at. Uh, we're going to start in verse 12 and then read through the end of, Pat, of chapter 3. Then the king's scribes were summoned on the 13th day of the first month. And an edict, according to all that Haman commanded, was written to the king's uh, satraps and to the governors over all the provinces and to the officials of all the peoples, to every province in its own script and every people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus. And sealed with the king's signet ring. Letters were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces. And instruction to do what? Destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all Jews. Young and old, women and children, in one day. In one day, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month. Which is the month of Adar. And to plunder their goods. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province by proclamation to all the peoples to the ready for that day. The couriers went out hurriedly by the order of the king, and the decree was issued in Susa, the citadel. 
And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Susa was thrown into confusion. So I'm going to back up here and we're just going to go over. For those of you who have missed um, maybe two, three weeks of this. And so we have Esther who was basically in control being controlled over the land. There's 27 providences, and King Ahasuerus is the king over all of these providences. He has all these leaders come in to his uh, kingdom, and they have a banquet for 100, I think it was 180 days, is that right? Something about that. 180 days, they throw a big party, and you can just imagine everything that goes on in the king's palace at the party going on. And then they wanted the queen to come in, and he was going to show off his queen. Well, it wasn't Queen Esther, it was uh, Queen Vashti, and she refused. Who of you would want to go into um, a party of all guys that were drunkard and be showed off uh, with all these members of a providence? providence? I wouldn't. I know any lady wouldn't. And so she refuses. So in the midst of this, then they said, well, if what? If she's allowed to do that, well, then the women across the whole country will stand up against their husbands and say no when they're told to do something. So she must be made an example. And so they went out throughout the, the land and they looked for another queen. So part of this was that they didn't know that Esther was a Jew. But Esther was very beautiful. And Esther was taken and chosen, was put into the king's, uh, you could say, harem. And then they were taking these beautiful baths for six months and smelling with herbs. And how many ladies would like to have a spa like that for six whole months, right? Facials, everything, you name it, from head to toe. And then uh, given what they would want, um, maybe not what they want, but what they're needed for like their faces to glow and just everything feel good. So they were, they were put in this position. They were watched over. They were looked at as, okay, who is going to be the one that's fit for the king and not only fit, but the most beautiful of the land? Kind of sounds like a Snow White uh, type deal, right? Or Cinderella type deal, but it's not in reality. It's Esther. It's the story of Esther. So you can read back. You can go through this, but now we have an issue with one gentleman whose name is Haman. And Haman is put in control in the, king's, in the kingdom, and Haman wants power. How many understand what power is? Everybody here know what power is? If you say something in your house, it's followed through, correct? <laughs> well, that's not power. Um, if you say something in your house, and there's fear through your house, like, Okay, your head might be coming off. Well, that's power. That's a power trip, all right? And this king had power, but Haman wanted this power. He was not the king, but he longed to have this power. The thing about, the thing about Satan is that what he tries to do is confuse us with power. Because what it is, the truth of it is, is that just because you say something in the home, you know, like, okay, throughout the whole year after year after year prior, as we go through and all the things, you can say churches, family, all the things, somebody somewhere always gets it into their head that this is the way it is, and you're going to abide by this. And I don't care what happens, this is what is taking place, and you will abide by this, Right? And then we all go, why is it that we go, no? Because we're like, you're on a power trip. Yes? And so we have this inside of it going, going uh-uh, I'll show you, <laughs> right? But with a king, you don't show a king. The king has the power trip if he wants a power trip, and you have nothing to say about it. Well, Haman wanted this power. He wanted it so bad that when the king gave him, you know, this high position, he went through the town, and, and then there was this order of what? When you hear music play, you know, and here's Haman on his horse, you're to do what? Bow down as he goes by. Well, Mordecai, who is the uncle of Esther, is standing there, and when, 
when going by, and he's, he's in the gate, and you can see Haman on the horse, and the, it starts playing, and everybody bows down except for who? Mordecai. It's kind of obvious, is it not? When you have thousands of people all around bowing down, and there's one. So focus. And day, it's, the Bible says that day in, day out, here's Mordecai. Making a stand. Why is he making a stand? Is it that he is in his own way rebelling against Haman, against the kingdom? What did God tell him to do? Thou shalt have no other gods before you. Thou shalt not make any gods, nor shall you bow down to anything other than what? Than God. And so Mordecai is willing to risk his life because of what? Because of God. Is there anything that is in your life that's taking place right now that possibly you're bowing down to instead of, instead of taking a stand for God? When something comes into our life and we, go, we start to choose and we start to go, you know what? God, because you did this in my life, you know what? Now I'm stepping away from you, and I see it differently. So I'm not going to serve you. I'm just going to do things my own way. So when Mordecai's standing there, he didn't see it that way. He said, he said, you know what? God told me this. I am doing it, and I'm making a stand, and I don't care what happens after that. If we as Christians put that type of effort in everything that is going on in our life, we make a stand in who? Not in ourselves, not for a power trip, but we make a stand in God Almighty. Amen? And I can tell you one thing that will take place. It's not the power that you want. It's Christ that you want. It's His power that you want. Not power of this world. Not the flesh power. Even though we love to have that every once in a while, right? You would love to come in the house and go, Children, do this. And they, they do it, and you're like, whoa, what happened? It was like, wow, this is crazy, right? How many know that that doesn't take place? Okay, we're on the same page here. And so here we go. So this is the attitude that we can get in our life, and I want us to, to realize these things are taking place. Well, Haman, he said this. Haman woke up one morning feeling on top of the world and because he was put in power and all these things, control power, cre and he created what he thought was his healthy world. You can create the life that you live in. You can create the life that you live in. How, and you say, well, how can I do that? My, my life is, you know, the day changes every day. I didn't change my day. No, you can't. You can't change your day. I can't replace a four-point buck with an eight-point buck and go, whoa, that was cool. I just replaced that. That doesn't happen, right? I can't control that, right? I can't take um, Ray and put him in my blind and I go sit in his blind and say, you know, we're going to go back to that day and I'm going to shoot your buck. You're going to see my four-point. No, that doesn't happen, right, Ray? <laughs> so it doesn't happen life continues to go on but here's the fact of it is what are you doing in your life how do you react to the things that are taking place in your life you either sometimes get angry at God for maybe the something that came in your life or you don't get angry with God or you just is like numb to society because maybe things in your life has just made you or you're this way going man I never, it just never changes. It's the same, it's the same, and it goes and goes, and I still have this issue, and I still have this problem, and I still have this, and I still have that. And life just seems to never change for you. So it's not that you are to have power in and of yourself. It's that you are to have Christ's power within you, and that is how you will get through it. It's whatever God deems necessary in your life, where you are at, that you will change your attitude towards God and say, God, I give you 
I give you my attitude. I give you my character. I give you my personality. I give you me. I give you my life. And wherever you place me in, whatever position you place me in, or even if I'm in a family, listen, if I am in a family, that I don't really care for some of the things that are taking place in my family. Do you realize that you can't change your family? Anybody try to? Doesn't work, does it? You can't change your family, but you can change yourself. You can't change your family, but you can change what is inside of you. And how that things that are affecting you, you can go, nope, that's not going to affect me, God, because you are more powerful within me. When you live a life that you're forgiving people that are coming at you, when you live a life that you're looking at different, not saying, you know what, I have the right to be and be the, and act this way because someone did this to me. No, you still don't have the right. Even though we think that we have the right because someone did us wrong. That's not where God's with us. Where God is with us is when we say, God, I know you know what's taking place and I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you every aspect that is taking place right now. I don't like it. I don't want it, but I'm giving it to you. And you use it to glorify whatever is taking place in my life. Use it. When we live that way, when we give, when we give of ourselves, and the Bible says sacrificially, right? We are conquering the darkness. Because the darkness has no power over you. If you let your family or you let the things that are happening take place in your family affect you, then you are letting the darkness have control over you. And there is no darkness in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And what he wants for you is he wants you to live a life that is, that is pleasing to him and giving your life completely to him. If it's not every second, if it's not every minute, if it's not every day, if it's not once a week or a decade, listen to me, we need to give our life to Jesus Christ constantly. If you allow the things in life to affect you, they will. And they'll go deep. And they will be toxic. And listen, you will be what came in to you. And you will be toxic. And you won't even know that you're toxic. Because you've shut off everything that has to do with God repairing you. God healing you. God doing a work within your life. We can let people affect us. But listen to me. Can I, can I just back up again? Listen, it's not the people that are affecting you. It's the darkness of this world. It's the what? The principalities and powers of this world, present world. When you allow that to have control in you, then you have a hard time living out of the darkness but with Christ how many want to have light his light amen? amen and that's the part that I want us to get today is that I want us to get out of the darkness and I want us to get into the light I want us to experience who God is who Christ is not what you're going through not what you did go through and not what you're going to go through because if you allow Jesus Christ to work and work and work and work in your life Guess what happens? The darkness goes away. You're no longer laying in bed thinking about the darkness. You're thinking about the light. You're no longer going to work and thinking about the darkness. You're thinking about the light. You're no longer going to school and thinking about the darkness at school. 
which is a lot of darkness at school, you're thinking about the light. It's all of life. We are either going to think about the darkness or we're going to think about light. And so here is Haman, and he's like this. It's my house, my truck, my car, my dinner, my TV, my hunting trip, my shopping spree, my work, my animals, my money, my children, my, 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 my. When we are living in self, everything is about us, is it not? It's, it's, this is me I'm talking about, not you. And I want to talk more about me. There's a lot of songs out there that's going through my mind about now. And there's even TV shows. I love, I love that. Um, what's, the, what's the animated one, uh, Walt Disney and the seagulls are after the fish? Finding Nemo. And what do they do? Mine, 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 mine. Hey, that's not us. That shouldn't be us. We shouldn't be going after all the things that we see in the flesh. Now you guys are all like a sidetrack. You'll be thinking, oh, yeah, I know. I remember that. Yeah, Nemo comes. It's like, okay, stop. Nope, don't go there. All right. So here is, so here is Haman, and Haman is in that mode. He's like, this is my, my world. Everything's about me. And we can get so wrapped up into that. So if he had a Facebook, what do you think Haman would put on his Facebook? A selfie. A selfie. <laughs> yeah, he would definitely do a selfie. How about texting? As soon as Mordecai didn't stand up, what do you think he would be doing? <laughs> Who is this guy? Is he, you know, he's supposed to, this guy is, what a jerk, what an idiot. No, 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 it's going on and on. Texting, texting, boom. And then he gets a reply. And what's usually the pro- reply? Oh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Haman. I, I don't even know this guy, and I, I'm with you. Let's just talk, let's talk trash today. And then you just you get on board. You don't even know what it is that you're talking. You have never seen him. You don't even know the character of the person, and you're already talking bad about him. And here it is. It's like that. And we all get into that. I mean, what's school like? Is that not school? Oh, my word. Big drama. Oh, my word. Just continues. And how many at work? Like, we're, yeah, is it a drama every once in a while it comes through? It never goes away. It's, it's about self. And when you look at somebody and you're like, like oh, man. It's, anyway, so him. What about, um, so here it is. Facebook can turn into my hook. Can it not? Facebook can turn into my hook. You look at it and you go, What? And you look at it and you go, oh, I got a comment. And then you do a comment, and then there's another one. Bloop. Where did this guy come from? He's from Africa. Down in some, and he's like all of a sudden going, I got a comment on this. And then they comment on that. And then here they put something up, and then they're coming. And all over the world you're getting these, who are these people? I didn't even know I had Facebook with them because you just kept clicking, accept, 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 accept. It's like, well, man, how do you get any work done? How do you? You probably don't <laughs> if you look at the Facebook. Oh, I'm like, wow, I spent 20 minutes on it, and I was like, okay, I'm done. It's crazy what takes place with Facebook. We need to be more in God's face than Facebook. Because the truth of it is, is if God is in control of us, we're not doing Facebook. I mean, okay, we can do Facebook. There's some cool things that take place. I'm not going there. I'm going with you know what I'm saying. Yes, God needs it. Yeah, his fa- what would his Facebook be saying? Woo, this is his Facebook, let me tell you. He's got a lot of good stuff in here. This is his Facebook, and it's truth. Amen. Way to go. Way to go, Amy. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment like, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So Facebook could turn into my hook. How about Insta Rage? Instead of Instagram, Insta Rage. And bashing. Hey, the Bible says this is hey, to flee. When you see it, listen, don't take things personal. It's not it's hard to do, right? Like they send something to you and you you like read it and you went, Did did he or she mean this way? Or did he and she mean this way? I think they meant it this way. <laughs> goes, uh, and it's like, woo, there it goes. 
So I could see Haman's world. I mean, man, he would be, he would be tripping in this world today. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. He would have more followers across <laughs> the whole providence than, wow. Okay, so let's go on. Um, so here's what we want. Philippians 4, verse 8. It says this. Finally, brothers, whatever is true. Whoa, whoa, wait a second, wait a second. Whatever is true. That means what? So some come across, and you don't know that it's true. You just take it someone's word for it. What does the Bible say? Whatsoever things are true. Well, whose truth? Whose truth? God's truth. So let's just worry about God's things, not people's things. Amen? I'm going to tell you what. You have, you're going to have less stress in your life by not replying. It's a fact. I can guarantee you because I go to sleep at night. I don't know what they said, and I don't care what they said. And then somebody will say, did you hear? Did you see this? I'm like, what? I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they did that. That's just crazy. And I'm waking and going, wow, what, what was going through their mind? And I'm like, I, I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. God, take it away. Take it away. That is the truth that we need to be looking at is those facts. So finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable. Wow, what, honorable, what is that? Like having honor. If you say something towards somebody or you put and post something, what should we be doing? We should be lifting one another up, amen? Is that not honorable? Listen, our enemies need to be loved. Because doesn't God tell us that? To destroy your enemies no he says to okay say it loud love your enemies amen we are to love our enemies well you don't understand god you don't understand the truth of it oh yeah he does he understands that we are what we are all sinners amen every one of us even your pastor standing up here oh man I would like to, mm. <laughs> and then I go, God, take this away, please, now, before. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, well, who's the one that can make a just decision? Oh, I can. I know every fact about you, and I know every fact about your, the, your, your friends. Absolutely not. That's hogwash. I don't know that, and neither do you. But God is just. And whatever is pure. Whoa, wait, wait, let's back up. Let's back up. Pure. Pure meaning what? Something that comes from God. That's pure. Not something of this world. Not something that demons want to portray and whatever is lovely whoo here we go well it's lovely some things that we look at we think are lovely <laughs> but it's not lovely you have to be careful and whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is any worthy of praise think about these things hey when you came to know jesus christ as your savior do you realize that you are a prince and you are a princess of the kingdom of heaven. And we need to act like it. We need to act like it. Because I can guarantee you this, is that in the king's palace, there is very, they refrain from saying what they want to say. They're not quick to act out because they've learned from their mistakes from before. And what does the Bible tell us? That we need to stop in what? Here. And we need to be slow to speak. Hey, we talked about last week, right? Our tongues can say things because we blurt it out right away. Instead of going, oh, put the brakes on. I got to stop. I got I to gotta listen to what's happening here because if I say this, well, then they got to take it this way. Maybe they won't take it this way. Oh, but I want them to take it that way. So I want to say it. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about is God says what? To listen to me. Listen. Listen to him. 
listen to the Spirit of God because He is truth and He is pure and He is honorable and He wants us to be as He is. See, that's how people can tell that there's a difference within you and me. Because when we are to say, like, you're around people and you don't say something and someone just came at you and, you, and they're, you're standing next to your friend and they came at you and they wanted you to blurt out, they wanted you to say something, they wanted you to cuss at them, they wanted you to do, they just wanted to get underneath your skin and you put the brakes on and you said what? Nothing. Do you know that nothing is the greatest, the greatest pill for them? Because they turn. It's like you just gave it back to them. Because they're going, oh, i got to think of another dig. i got to think of something else that I can get them to rouse them, come back at me. And it just goes on and on and on, right? Never quits. But the person who stops it is the person who is going to be following God. Listen to me, it's truthful. This is truth. And when you do it, you're not doing it in a way that you're going, <laughs> I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to make you sweat it today. No, you're doing it in a love of God because God loves them. Amen? God loves the sinner so much that he sent his son to die for each sinner in this world. And if we're not showing the love of Christ, then how can we show his love? That there's a better way. There's a fantastic way. And that is showing the love of Christ and being the way that we should. Not doing my hook on Facebook um, or the Insta Rage or bashing, but doing things that are appropriate with God. Oh, what a wee little web we can be caught up in. And when you look at a spider's web, you ever, you ever notice a spider's web sometimes? You're driving by or you just like look out in a field and you ever see a spider web and it's just gorgeous. Like you go, wow, that was beautiful. But what is a web? What is a web made for? Are you being caught in something you think is good? something that you think is beautiful? Are you being caught in it? The Bible says is to beware of all these things and allow him to come into your life and do these things. See, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will take every aspect of your life. He works on forgiveness. How many know that we're to forgive one another? You can raise your hand. The Bible says it. We should be having hands everywhere. Do it again. I want to see. Forgive one another. Amen. Let's just say it out loud. We are to forgive one another. It's not that you're letting things, letting things slide and letting things go forward. It is that inside of you, you are releasing some healing ointment. Because when you learn to forgive, it's not that you're after them every single day. Wow, what can I do, God? No, God says that he's the what? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine, not you. If you think you're good at it, you got another thing coming because you look, okay, I'm not going to say what you look like. But God, he's a little more long-suffering, but he tries to bring about a change. And the fact of it is, is that if you can learn to forgive others, then you're also able to forgive yourself and move forward. This is the craziest thing, is I think that we, we take things inside, we don't release it to God, and it just burrows inside. And then something triggers and you get angry. Something triggers and you get bitter. Something triggers, and then your life is about, man, I, if I had power today, I would do this. When God's saying, what are you worried about? What are, what are you spending your time on 
concentrating on trying to get back or trying to get even or trying to say certain things that are going to put you in a position of power, control. What does God say about control? Let him have control. Let him have his way in you. See, he doesn't go, let him have his way in the person that is trying to control you. He says, let him have his way in you, me. Each of us saying that to God. We must have, con- let him have control. If you are having control, well, then you're having issues with forgiveness. If you are having control, you are having issues with bitterness. If you are having control, the list goes on and on and on, and it's toxic, and it will affect you, and it will affect your family, and it will affect your workplace, and it will affect your school. We can be toxic without even knowing that we're toxic because we let someone else come into our life and bring that toxicity or whatever it is, and then we become bitter inside, and we don't even know, and the wheel goes round and round and round, right? And keeps going, and sooner or later, that stuck wheel gets a little more loose, and then you don't even know it, and then what takes place? All havoc breaks loose because you didn't get it repaired first. Satan knows what he's doing, and he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He will steal your forgiveness, he will kill your gratitude and giving heart, and he will destroy your work for Christ. What usually takes place is this, is, is if someone affected you, you'll be like, you're like, you know what, I'm done with you, God. I am throwing in the towel, and here's, and here's what I have here, a whole bunch of things. So we're going to read Esther 4. We're going to go to chapter 4. And before we go there, I want, to, I want to look at these things that we say. I'm going to quit and throw in the towel. I'm going to escape from the situation by becoming silent. How many of us have escaped by becoming silent and not gone to the conflict but decided to just be silent and let everything pass through so that it goes to the next person and it goes to the next family and then it goes to the next generation. I wonder today if how many generations of toxic things would have been stopped by one person standing up and saying this is wrong and saying God help me to break the chains help me to change this generation and in prayer and in you yourself because of you going through what you know is toxic you can help you can change it by only God listen to me only God I was going to show a video up here this morning, and it, sh- it was talking about the toxic. If, if you are da-da-da, and it had this, these little stick people and all this stuff, and it was, it was good, but you could tell they weren't Christians. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that. <laughs> it was you yourself can do this, but I'm going to tell you what, you can't do it without God and have an effect on your generation. We say we're going to throw in the towel, escape from the situation by becoming silent. If I can just get through another minute. Have you ever done that? Have you ever said, if I, could, if I could just get through another minute, if I could just get through another hour, if I could just get through another day, if I could just get through another month, if I could just get through another year, if I could just get through another decade. Why? Why put yourself through if I could just get through it, when you got God on your side. And when you give it to Christ and you give it to God and you truly are giving it to them, then you don't have to think about it any longer. 
There is joy that comes every morning. And I always think of that, well, what is at night? Darkness is at night. Hey, give it back to Satan. When you go to bed at night, give it all to him by giving it all to God. And say, Satan, you have no more effect on me. You have no more effect. And I can guarantee you this, when you wake up in the morning, the mercies are ever new. And you'll be skipping to work, and you'll be skipping to school. You'll be skipping to church. (laughs) Not skipping church, but skipping to church. You will have a whole other life that you've never had before because you gave it to God. And you said, Satan, you have no more power over me. None. It's refreshing. Can you see it? It is refreshing to know that Satan can't keep me locked up any longer. It's refreshing to know that God will do a work within me and do a work within you. We are all sinners. We are saved by grace, and we either believe it or we don't believe it. And I can tell you this, if you're laying in bed at night and you're worrying and you have anxiety and the list goes on and on and on about the things that people are doing in your life, today's the day you need to release it. That's why Christ came, so that he could have his life in you. You get that? His life in you. Not mine. You don't want my life in you. Just like you don't want the person sitting next to you's life in you. But you want Christ's life. Trust me, you want Christ's life in you. Because he is what? Love, joy, ooh, peace, kindness, long-suffering towards me, gentleness. The list goes on of who God is, right? And when we feel that, that's how we act towards the people that are in our life. Can you see that? I know many people in my life that I've, that I, when I was growing up, and I always use, I always use Christopher's grand, grandfather. He wasn't my uncle, but I love that man. And he had, he didn't have a life of luxury, did he? But I tell you what, Lyle Harmon served his God with all his heart, with all his soul and all his mind. And he couldn't sing a lick, but that man could whistle Amazing Grace when the times got rough. And I didn't even know when I was young what he was whistling until I went to church and I was like, oh, that's what it is. And there were things that happened in his life that he sat down, he would even say some of the things, but he wouldn't go into it. Because you know what he did? He gave it to God. He didn't have bitterness in his heart. He didn't have anger in his heart. He was picking up kids, an old beat up Dotson, and taking them to church in the back with chairs and it didn't even have a camper on it. Then he finally put this camper top on it because then it kept his dogs warm, you know, when they went up hunting coon. He would load that with kids and bring them to church. It's against the law now. (laughs) (laughs) Can I tell you that you can let things infect you or you can release it and give it to God and allow God to do great and mighty things through you and change your generation, your next generation, by you living for God. We take things personal, and it's not that which we should take personal. It's that we need to give it to God because the rulers and principalities are of this air, 
and they're trying to stop you. Listen, they're trying to kill you. They're trying to destroy you. Are they? Are you letting them? Or can you stop and just say, God, you are good. I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I'm going to trust you, God. Can I, can I just tell you? It's going to be great. It is going to be fine because he's got you. Inside the church, we can be so godly that we're no earthly good. Well, do you know that person's coming to church and they're sitting next to me? Well, they, they shouldn't even be in this church. Hey, put the brakes on that. I shouldn't even be here. But because of God's grace, he's allowing me to stand in front of you. I always, when people go, all the, the when I come through those doors, the place is going to collapse. <laughs> and I'm like, you're coming to the right place, buddy. Because if God looked at our sins, this whole building would collapse in a moment. If I walked through that door, just me alone, this building would collapse. If we're looking at, this is the Holy of Holies. But God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to shed his blood. That when we accept Jesus Christ into our life and we ask for forgiveness of, of our sins, not the persons next to you, but our sins, then it's his grace that's sufficient. Amen? It's his grace that he gives us, and he says, uh, it's all glory to God. Nothing that you did. Amen? It's not by works. It's not by anything lest any man should boast. It's by Jesus Christ alone in his blood. And when we accept that and we put it into our life, he says this, I'm going to do one thing better. I'm going to take your life, and I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to transform the things that are going on in your life and you can change the generation that's coming up next for you. All the things that have been a part of your life that has detoured you from stepping, to, from stepping with God is what? That's God's. Give it to Him. He said it. Give it to Him. Quit hanging on to past quit hanging on to things that are tr making you bitter making you angry making you stay up making you have the things and thoughts in your life give it to god and let christ change you we can have so much build up inside of us one thing can trigger us and we take it out on another person can i tell you this when you give it to God, he takes that away. Hey, you might get aggravated. You might go kick the tire because it's flat and the day didn't go quite how you have liked it. But that's the flash that comes out, right? Nobody's agreeing with me. You never like kicked the tire because it went flat. <laughs> wow. See, I told you I'm a sinner saved by grace. Is there not things in life that's coming? I'm just talking. It's Tire's one of them, but things come up, and you get upset, and you get uptight. Well, that's because we're in a fallen world, people. But God still loves you, and he still wants you to go, oh, sorry, God, sorry, I'm getting back on track. That's not where I was supposed to be. I'm going back. I'm on it. I'm on it. Hey, if we live that way, is that not a better way to live? And for our children to see that that's the way we are living, like, I mean, don't, don't make up the excuse of like, well, pastor said I can get angry and that I can just, you know, give it back to God. No, work on it. We have to work on it. Because Christ said that we are not to continue the same path in the same way, in the same, you know, we're supposed to mature. God is not the author of confusion. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 33. And God will take evil and turn it to good. That's Genesis 50, verse 20. I'm going to read this passage. We're going to close. 
Before I do, I want to say this. Take back what was stolen from you and quit doing drugs. Quit doing sex or pornography or quit doing alcohol. Quit doing shopping. Quit doing a facade. Because here's what takes place in our life is if we're not following Christ, if we're not following God, and something comes into our life from somebody else, we take it out on God. If we're not following Him, then we're following who? And so what we do is we go, well, you know what? Because that person did this, well, then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to show them. If you're watching this tape, listen to this because this is what we do in the flesh. We will hurt ourselves to get back at somebody else. And you and you and you go subconsciously, you're like thinking, why would I ever do this? Like you in the right mind, you wouldn't do it, but in that agony, in the moment, in the frustration, and all these things that take place, and that it, all of a sudden your mind, because it's the darkness that has overcome you. It's the darkness that has overcome, and the darkness comes to seek and destroy and kill. That's not God that's in your head. It's Satan that's in your head. It's the demons. It's the things that they put inside there. That's, that's in your head. I don't want to live because, because this happened to me. I don't, want to, I don't want to go forward in this area or this area, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take this, and I want to forget. I want to get away. I want to forget about all the things that are taking place in my life, so I'm going to take drugs. I'm going to take uh, alcohol. I'm going to um, explore different avenues, whatever it is that, that takes me away for just a moment. Can I tell you this, that that moment will take your life. It will take your life. And now you just gave that person. You just gave that person that did this to you, which it's not the person, it's Satan. And you just gave that power of darkness to him. That's why God says, can you, can you retract? Can you come to me? All ye who are what? Heavy laden with burdens. And I will give you rest. Do you want peace? Do you want rest? Then follow God's ways. Not your own. Today is the day. That's why he says today's the day. Today's the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can say, hey, God is not the author of confusion. Are you confused? You won't be when you're with God. You won't be with Jesus Christ. You will not be confused any longer. We're going to close with this passage we're just going to read it quickly chapter 4 when Mordecai learned all that had been done Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out in the midst of the city and cried out with a loud and bitter cry why was he why was he crying because why? All the Jews were going to be killed. Who was in control of this? King Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus or Satan? It's the powers of the darkness. Who has the real control? God Almighty has the real control. And so Mordecai, he pleads and he goes and he puts on sackcloth and ashes. He doesn't give up. He doesn't go, he doesn't say, oh, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm not serving you anymore, God, because every time I serve you, I get in trouble. My life just becomes more complicated. 
No, Mordecai said, no, I'm going to plead for the lives of people. Are we pleading for the life of our generations to come? Are we trying to change what's taking place in our life, or are we just letting it go blind, blindly? Well, it didn't affect me, but I see it's affecting someone in my family. No, don't become blind to it. Go to that person. Stop it. Help stop it. And you go to the Lord in what? Prayer. You don't go to the person and go, go do you know what you're doing? And here we go. Put them on, let's go on, bash them and crash them and all this stuff. No, you do it in God's way. God's love. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate, clothed in sackcloth, and every providence where the king's command and decree reached. There was a great mourning among the Jews uh, with fasting and weeping and lamenting. And many of them lay in sackcloth and clothes. See, there's a difference between getting back at somebody and then going to the Lord in what? Prayer. For that person. So then Mordecai tells Esther that she needs to tell the king, go talk to the king about what is taking place. And um, Esther says, <laughs> Esther says, well, wait a second, Mordecai. Um, they don't know that I'm a Jew. And this is what Mordecai says. We're going to go right to verse 14 of the same chapter, chapter 4. 13. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Listen to me. Can you look at what is taking place in your life? Can you see that certain things in your life are affecting, not your life, but maybe your life and in the family? Can you see that there are things that are affecting other people and other generations that are coming up within your family? or within the church, or within this community, or whatever it is, it's time to take a stand in God. For such a time as this, if I was ever like in a locker room, this is the time right now. It's like the football game, right? And we're on, we're on this last. We have, we're down by three, and then we just need to do what? Let's just go, let's do the touchdown. Let's get over it. Let's, let's do this, right? And so I'm telling you all these things. So you do this, and you do this, and I know you can do this, and you do this, and let's go. Everybody, right, let's go. Come on, come on, people. This is where it's at. It says this. He's going, this is Mordecai, and she's, he's going this. Hey, for such a time as this, Esther, for such a time as this. Can you look at your life and can you say for such a time as this, it's your life? But is it? No, it's God's life. But he's going to use you for such a time as this. Are you hearing it? Can you hear it? I pray you do today. And I pray that you look at your life as something great. Because God will use each and every one of you right here, right now. You came for a reason this morning that was to hear this message. If you're watching it, you are hearing it because God wanted you to hear it. For such a time is this. So here's her reply. Verse 16, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young woman will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Listen, if we have more of this in our hearts, more of this kind of attitude in our life, and here's the fact of it is, is that she was, was going to go to the king, and if the king did not hold out his staff, then what would happen to her? She would be taken away, and she would marched and killed. That's why she said, if I die, I die. 
If we start having that attitude in our life that we're going to walk with God, we're going to talk with God, we want God to be a part of our life so that we can change those people around us. So not only is God going to change your life, he's going to change those around you and the generation that's to come in and of your life. He will change it, bless you. And he'll change that. He will. He will change it. And so here is Esther, and she says, she says this. See, she knew. It's God who changes it. And she says, she says, call everybody together, and for three days do what? Have a party. Let's get it over with. We're just going to party until we're killed. No, wrong answer. We're going to pray to God, and we're going to fast. We're not even going to eat food. We're going to drink some water. We're fasting for three days. What would it be like this if this took place? What if, what if you came to me or came to the board and said this, I got an issue in my life. Will you fast and pray with me? See, I got, I got a feeling that great and mighty things would happen when we do those things. Instead of coming together and going, and going, well, this person did this to me, and this person did that, and I can't believe they did that. And then, you know, what happened over there? And then this, and the, all hell just broke loose. I don't know why, but wow, just crazy. Oh, wow, pastor said hell? Oh, don't do, <laughs> don't do that. We fight against hell. We fight against the principalities and powers of this air, which is darkness. They are from hell. They are from the pit of hell. And are you letting them be released in your life? I'm not swearing. It's the truth. Or are we going to let God do a work in our own life? And we're going to tell him to go back to hell. Because one day, woo, one day, hey, we've been reading Revelation. Yes, right? One day, he is going to be locked up forevermore. And we are going to be, woo, man, the trumpets will be playing. I'm going to be going. <laughs> I can't dance, but. That's as best I can get. <laughs> it's going to be so good. It's going to be good. And you will never have to go through this, but listen to me. If you can focus on God, I'm going to tell you, He gives you life. He gives you the strength. He gives you what you need to go through your battles. Amen? Let's stand and sing this song together. <clears throat>